This is the um, the latest DigiGurdy. It's the the one I'm happiest with as a complete design. I'll go through the main features. Um, clearly, there's a crank. Um, the buttons press on micro switches. You can see better underneath here. You can hear them clicking. Um, they send data to a computer. The computer is connected through this cable, which comes out here, uh, through this little adapter, okay, to a mobile phone, an Android phone, and this clicks in here. And I'll show you how that works later. And uh, it outputs MIDI, which is an industry standard fo uh, format for music and the um, app takes the MIDI values on each of five channels and processes it into um, hurdy-gurdy sound, if you like. You can put headphones into the top of the phone and wear headphones. You can also Bluetooth the phone to a pair of Bluetooth headphones, or you can Bluetooth the phone to um, a Bluetooth speaker. Or if you have the right adapter, you can connect this to your hi-fi amplifier if you really want to blast out the neighborhood. Now you can see it's come on a bit from my original one, which now I thought was great at the time. Now it looks pretty clunky. Um, as you can see in the original one, the keys pressed micro switches, which did not have rollers on the ends and it was all 3D printed. Um, the problem with this design is if you hit the keys really hard, you're putting all the force onto the micro switch. So for this one, the micro switches have rollers on the end okay here and the keys are designed so that they they hit the deck they hit the front there doesn't matter how hard you hit them just before the micro switch reaches its full travel so it just clicks there then it hits the deck so you can play away as hard as you want and you shouldn't damage the micro switches it's the same for the top keys the micro switches go into hollowed out areas under the keys click hits the deck so you can hit them more or less as hard as you like, which is good. You have a crank here for, for tr packaging that removes with little tiny screws here, which little grub screws, which are undone with this. So when it's shipped to you, this will be separately packaged with a little one of these uh, Allen keys there. Okay. You have a screen. Screen glass is quite fragile. If you hit it, it will crack. That's why I've recessed it. Uh, also, the keys, instead of being held in with bolts, we had little bolts in this version, are held in with rubber O-rings. Now, if you pop the rings off, you can take the keys out. Just pop it off, the key will come out. So if you break a key or something, I can send you another one or I can send you the print file. So what's different about this one? Um, I've tried to make it as professional as possible. We're using aluminium extrusions for the whole frame now. The front is not wood anymore. It's uh, white laser cut acrylic. And the same at the back, which gives you this nice, nice finish, professional looking. And we have aluminium inserts everywhere else. Some of the parts are 3D printed. These end parts are 3D printed. Um, I'm using quite a good printer. If you look up close, you will see that it's 3D printed, but you know, compared to this one, which is a bit raggedy around the edges, if you look at the quality of the print, um, this is much, much better. So because it's only made in small numbers, you know, you can't injection mold the parts, the molds cost a lot of money. So you are, you're still using 3D printing. So it's a, it's a set of uh, compromises. Um, I'm using aluminium where possible and 3D printing where, where not. Now, how does it work? Um, you've probably seen the other videos. As you crank, you can adjust the point, the speed at which the buzz comes in. And that's adjusted with this knob here. This knob is from a guitar. It's made of metal. Um, you know, it's a reasonably good quality knob. Um, this knob overrides the crank. So if you're fed up with cranking and you just want to practice your um, the, the keys, just hit that and the drones will come on and 
it will behave as if you're cranking it without turning the handle and you hit it again to stop it. Now, what's this strange structure here? There is a reason for this and there's a good reason. Um, if we do a software upgrade, and most people who are interested in this seem to be outside of the UK where I'm based, if you want a software upgrade, you currently, if you're an Arduino enthusiast, an Arduino being a, a small computer on the size of a credit card um, built into the machine, um, you could plug this into your laptop. And if you know all about Arduino programming, you could put the, I could email you the software and you could upload it onto the computer through this USB port. Now, the problem is many musicians um, some musicians are totally into electronics and some aren't. This is a medieval kind of instrument. So let's assume you're, you're not into electronics. There is another way. This front, strange looking front panel is there for a reason. It's held in with three screws. One, two, three. That's missing on this one. I'm just waiting for them to arrive. Um, all the screws on this machine are done up gently. You do them up just enough. You're, you're going into plastic and materials like this, so don't do anything up really tight. Just do it up tight enough to do the job. Um, just bear that in mind. Just because I'm using a large screwdriver doesn't mean I need to use a large screwdriver. Now this is a little bit of a fiddle. You just wiggle it and it should come off. Hang on, there we are. Now this comes off. I don't know if you can see, but there's some locating points. There's a tiny pin there. That tiny pin has to go in that hole there, under there. Uh, and this, this top edge has to tuck under the edge of the aluminium there. So when you put it on, you just take it easy. Just, just work it into place. Anyway, we'll take it off. Now what's this underneath? Okay. The first thing is the cable is held captive. Not only is the cable tie here, it's glued into place. Um, if you pull on this cable, I don't want you to rip all the electronics out of the machine. This is an Arduino Teensy board. It's a, a fast, uh, miniaturized Arduino board. All right. Now, the idea with this is you can unplug it. So if you want a software upgrade and you are not into computers at all, you can mail me this. So what you would do is you would wiggle this off very carefully out the way. And then I would probably take that key out. But you can actually remove, just take it very slowly, very slowly. You can remove the right that that is the whole computer so you can send that to me in the mail wrap it in bubble wrap and put it in a box um stick it in jiffy pack like this and you can mail it to me and i'll give you a software upgrade i'll send it back to you and so you can see how it goes back in you must line the pins up carefully don't rush it like i am now don't bend the pins there are only two rules. There's only one rule. Don't bend the pins. Okay, and just work it into place. There we are. And this is the advantage of this new one. The new one has a printed circuit board which runs behind the keys the whole length and includes the mounting for this. And then again, this plugs a little bit on the fragile side, so just take it easy. Don't rush. There we are. Okay. Now there is room here for a memory card. You'd have to take this key out to put the memory card in. I'm not using that for anything yet, but there is possibility for something there in the future. And then, as I said before, with great care, you just massage this back into place. There we are, you see it's going into place. Oops, not quite, not quite, it's resisting me. So you see, so that edge is tucked in. The little mount locating stud is tucked in. This is all flush with the deck. This is held tight. And so we can carefully, without over tightening our screws and just not, and not stripping the threads, just take it easy. There we are, do these up. Not too tight. 
it's just to hold it you don't want to crack the plastic and there's another one there which is coming um, the ends are held on with long screws again if you over tighten them you'll cr start cracking plastic so just tighten them up enough and again here no more so how does it work right. you plug this into your phone now this is the weak point okay so you might want to have your phone in like a car phone holder and you'll see here it self starts crank module detected the version there you go now if i dim the lights a little right you need this app fluid synth midi you open the app i've plugged in the computer um when you connect it for the first time you go into settings use internal sound font no you don't want that sound font you don't want to do, we're not downloading the sound font we're selecting the sound font from a file now i will have emailed you the sound font and you will have downloaded it to the phone so you go through your phone menus until you find the sound font you want now in my case it's actually in uh, uh app data this folder um sound fonts this is the one i want vienna alto mod 10 click that that's my sound font also set keep screen on i would suggest so you've done those three things you found your sound font now when you plugged in your, your uh digigurdy hang on this comes up teensy duino teensy midi now you remember the computer is called an arduino teensy so yes we'll click that <clears throat> now it's asking me here we go it's asking me what do i want on each channel select your tuning so you've got here g key of g with a d trompet and a g drone or two is uh, g key of c c trompet c drone and so on so let's say we go for the first one we're going to do the first one so we need uh, a melody string in g low g steel melody d trompet on channel two where's d trumpet high d trumpet there we are channel three it's telling me what to do you see g drone low g drone now the two more channels channel four we set our buzz so we've got um buzz nigel loud we'll have that channel five is your key click sound we've got loud medium quiet so shall we have medium there we are so it's ready to go now you set the tuning up um as in this first option here so now you tell the digigurdy that you've chosen tuning option one now if you imagine these keys are one two three four five six then we've set option one so if i press key number one it takes me to the next screen which actually tells me how to set up the channels you see i've just done it actually but it shows you channel one low g melody channel two high d trumpet channel four um, buzz key click so um doing it this way it, it basically tells you how to set up the phone because the phone doesn't actually know um what key you want to play in and how you want to set up the strings so the two now match we have a light blue key dark blue key so we're going to press the light blue key to confirm right now it says do we want the drones on or off light blue key is on dark blue is off so remember our light blue keys there dark blue there so we'll have them on so we'll press that there we go drones on right now it's ready to go so put the phone down uh, okay can adjust where the buzz comes in with this knob here and if I get fed up with turning the crank I can just hit this button so or so right on hit the button 